Yeah, hello, my name is Axel Heidenreich. I'm a professor of Euro-Oncology at the Department of Urology, Euro-Oncology, Robot-Assisted and Specialized uh, Surgery at the University Hospital in Cologne. Um, today I'm talking about the molecular testing in patients with prostate cancer, the clinical relevance and the therapeutic consequences. Okay, so in my view, molecular testing in prostate cancer is of clinical significance of, and relevance, and it should be done depending on the questions we would like to answer. So usually, we do molecular testing in those patients who have a high risk to develop either hereditary prostate cancer or who might have mutations which could trigger um, later treatment. So guideline in, in um, adjunction with the guidelines, we usually perform molecular testing in all patients who have a positive family history in terms of prostate cancer, ovarian cancer or breast cancer. We also should perform this type of molecular testing in patients who harbor specific pathohistological features of their prostate cancer, namely it's a creepiform and introductal growth pattern. And then the other cohort of patients in whom we should do molecular testing in pa is patients with metastatic disease, in whom we try to identify druggable mutation for a specific um, precise oncology treatment. So usually it should be done in patients with metastatic hormonal e prostate cancer and latest in patients who already have developed metastatic castration resistant disease. Yeah, so the CAPTCHA study was a peer study on patients who had metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer and the authors wanted to evaluate the frequency and the type of mutations in terms of the HRR genes. We know from uh, studies in metastatic castration resistant disease that approximately 30% of our patients will harbor mutations in these specific DNA repair pathway genes, which then results in the possibility to deliver PARP inhibitors as a specific targeted treatment. And now the CAPTCHA study evaluated more than 500 patients with metastatic hormone sensitive disease, and they identified that about 28% of those patients did harbor mutations of the HRD genes. 50% of these mutations were BRCA1 and 2 mutations and 50% were non-BRCA mutations of the HRD genes. So this study demonstrated for the first time that the frequency and the type of mutations in metastatic treatment naive disease is basically identical to those uh, frequencies and types of mutations we see in castration resistant disease, making treatment with specific um, therapeutic options earlier possible. In my view, it's a very important study which will change the treatment landscape of metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer completely. So what the Amplitude study did, it was a prospective randomized trial to either give patients ADT and apiratrone or to give patients ADT, apiratrone and niraparib. And uh, the inclusion criteria was metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. And all of those patients needed to harbor some type of HRD gene mutations. The primary endpoint of this study was radiographic progression-free survival, and uh, we did observe a significant benefit in terms of RPSF in patients who have received additionally niraparib. So this study demonstrated for the first time that the addition of a PARP inhibitor to a typical doublet therapy in patients with MHASPC has a significant benefit in terms of oncological outcome. We did not see a benefit in overall survival so far, which is most probably due to the fact that follow-up is not uh, very long, and most probably due to the effect that the events triggering overall survival analysis have not reached, been, uh, have not reached so far. And the third point which this type of study demonstrates is we see an increase in treatment associated toxicity and the triplet therapy versus the doublet therapy. However, we don't see any unexpected treatment associated toxicities. We just see those side effects we always see with the addition of a PARP inhibitor to a typical um, systemic hormonal therapy.
Yeah, in my view, um, the next steps should be to um, just identify patients with specific mutations in order to start um, targeted therapy at earlier stages. So what we need to do is um, we probably should do specific molecular testing with next generation sequencing in biopsy samples, in archival radical prostatectomy specimens, or in terms of liquid biopsy, already starting in patients who have locally advanced and maybe local regional metastatic disease, but latest in patients who have hormone sensitive specific um, hormone sensitive metastatic prostate cancer. And uh, we already know that about 10% of those patients have P10 loss which can be targeted by an ACT inhibitor. We know that about 30% of those patients will have HRD gene mutations, so we can target them with a PARP inhibitor. And we know, for example, that patients who have S-POP mutations, they just need ADT monotherapy and have the same oncological outcome as patients treated with a triplet therapy. So the main focus for uro-oncology should be early testing and then um, a specific targeted treatment based on the mutational results. I mean, as I said, personalization should start at the very early stage when you have a family, positive family history. If we detect some genes which might be um, responsible for hereditary prostate cancer, then we can counsel patients with regard to human genetic um, studies. We also can counsel patients with early screening and with early biopsies and maybe early MRTs. Uh, and then in the stage of metastatic disease, we should identify molecular testing already at locally advanced disease to identify patients who might benefit most from surgery or from radiation therapy. And we also will be able to identify patients who need intensified systemic treatment or in whom we can de-intensify treatment without uh, losing uh, therapeutic efficacy. Yeah, so all these patient report outcome measures or quality of light measures are extremely important because we have many combination therapies and all of these combination therapies probably will increase the treatment associated toxicity. However, we know that at least patients who have metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer have a median overall survival of about seven to eight years with all these new treatment options. So it will be our duty or our obligation to identify treatment options which have the less, the, the lowest impact on quality of life on our patients so that we on one hand can increase the therapeutic efficacy and on the other hand um, being able to maintain a stable quality of life for the patients.